Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In today's video, I'll take you through the steps of using Compoflex. So Compoflex is a three-in-one system, so it has the release film, peel ply, and infusion mesh all in one layer. So this should save you quite a good amount of time doing a layup. The traditional technique would be using a peel ply, followed by the infusion mesh, and then the vacuum bag as a final layer uh, to have a good resin infusion. So we'll be using two glass plates to make like carbon fiber veneer, I call it carbon fiber veneer, because we'll be using it to veneer a watch case in the next tutorial to come. So I'll add the watch case tutorial in the description down below. So it all starts by using glass plates and then we just add the release agent to like, like to have a good release of the carbon fiber plates that we'll be making. So this will be the resin infusion technique and to my opinion this is the best technique to make pinhole free uh, samples or plates or even parts. So for this little project we'll be using two layers. So the first layer will be a 240 gram square meter carbon fiber. So it's listed as specialists because it has a nicer finish uh, in the weave. So it's more tight in weave and it looks better in my opinion visually. As a backing layer, we'll be using the black stuff. So this is a cheaper uh, variant of uh, carbon fiber. And normally in composites industry, cheaper would normally mean like less quality. But in this case, we're using it as a backing layer. And for that stuff, the black stuff is like perfect to use because I wouldn't use black stuff as a finishing layer. It's less appealing than other woven carbon fibers but as a backing layer you just want to add support to your first layer and then it's perf perfectly fine to use the black stuff as a second layer also nice to mention is that it's one third of the price of the regular carbon fiber so you're you're at around 10 pounds square meter and a normal like one square meter of carbon fiber would be at around 25 to 30 pounds so what I'm doing here, I'm just using masking tape because I'm doing an experiment to compare the traditional technique with the Compoflex. So I want to have two perfectly identical pieces of carbon fiber that will be infused. So here I'm preparing everything for, for the first plate, so the traditional technique. So I'm making the uh, peel ply ready and I'm just applying it with a light, I would say, I get a lot of messages on my Facebook and on the Facebook page um, We Love Composites as well with people having troubles with the surface finish and mostly this is related to using too much um, fusion spray, um, tech spray. So it's like a thing, never use the fusion fix or any like spray tech directly onto your mold surface. And if you're using it, just use it in a light mist, just like to have a nice tack between the layers, but it's not that you have to glue the both layers together. So this is one of the biggest mistakes most people starting with composites have is using too much spray, uh, resulting in a white mist or pinholes onto your surface. So here we have it again. So this is the Compoflex. Uh, I was surprised how thin it was. I was thinking about like a more heavy layer, um, but till this point, like I was making this tutorial and have never used it before uh, as well. So I'm just doing like I would with the tra traditional technique. The only difference that I notice is that you cannot have a resin break, but I'll talk about that later on in the video. So here we have the vacuum bag. So it's applied. I like to use pleats because this is quite a common mistake as well. Um, people just going all the way around, not having pleats. And to my opinion, this is a possible chance to have leaks. So here you have it, the backing layer. The good thing about glass plates is that you can see the back of your part as well. And it helps me as well to see spots in the tacky tape where air might sip through. So the big advantage of the pleats is that you have less stress on your back. Once you're starting the infusion, the vacuum will like go lower and it might give a chance to have leaks onto your sides. So as you can see here, I'm mixing the resin. You will also, also notice that we have two different colors of vacuum bags and that's because I had to redo one bag. So 
another lesson in making carbon fiber pieces with resin infusion is never infuse a part if you have a leak. So I always like to do the vacuum vacuum parts at night and when I come back and I still have a full va vacuum then I know that the part is fully sealed. So here I'm mixing the IN2 infusion resin and then you can see here the infusion. So I have marks every five centimeters just to compare like the flow speeds of both infusions. So in the green bag you have the Compaflex and on the first parts you have the regular infusion layup with the peel ply and the infusion mesh. So as you can see one might seem slower but I like to have a resin break into the infusion. I'll talk about that later on when I compare the two. Uh, but for the rest, the infusion was just as fast on both sides. So here I'm just measuring the amount of resin that went into each part. And by having this, I can like compare and calculate the fiber to resin ratio that we have in both plates. So very important as well, and most people starting with composites forget about this, is that you have to do a post cure with epoxy resins. So these two parts were post cured at around 50 degrees for, I think it was around seven or eight hours. And this will ensure you to have a properly cured epoxy that will not distort at any temperature under the curing temperature. So this would be 50 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, uh, the parts might look warped, but once removed um, of the peel ply, it goes just flat again. So here we see the Compaflex. So it's, I was surprised how easy it was to remove the infusion mesh peel ply and um, the perforated film by having this Compaflex um, buildup or technique uh, being used. So both results are quite similar. I didn't notice a big difference in resin amount that is being used in the two different techniques. So the Compaflex is comparable to a regular infusion with, uh, with a medium infusion mesh. And here we can see, so we have the green one. This is the one with Compaflex. It has around uh, 135 uh, grams into the buildup of the vacuum supply. And here now we can just calculate the resin to fiber ratio. So we have two layers, it's 440 grams square meter. We only have 1.12 square meters, so it's 53.85 grams on each place of fiber. So now we know about the resin, and then we just can calculate the amount of fiber to resin ratio. So I like to do this just to know if there would be a big difference, both were just the same. So here's another difference. So I'll go through the positive and the negative sides that I personally think about. Um, and it's a personal opinion, so I would not say this is like something you can relate on. But to me, I would say that the Compaflex is easy and fast to do the layup with because you just have to apply one layer. I also seen on the sides of uh, Fibertex, I think that's a company producing this, that you can overlap um, two pieces. So I just did plates, so I don't know if it's good to overlap, uh, but it's possible. So in another way, it's quite cheap. So it's around 10 euro square meter. Um, it has a low resin absorption, so it's not like a big difference with the uh, traditional technique, it's very easy to remove. So for me, that's the big selling point, I think. Um, the negative sides is I think it's quite difficult to do a 3D, a 3D layup without having bridging. You cannot add a resin break. So I like to have a resin break, meaning just having peel ply so that the, re the resin at the end of the infusion will slow down. Another thing is you cannot adjust it. So I like to have different flow meshes for different parts. So I would use like a thicker flow mesh for bigger parts. And so the Compaflex just have one type here and that would be like a medium infusion um, speed. On the other side, the traditional technique is cheaper. It's more adjustable by having different infusion meshes possible. Uh, it's possible to do 3D shapes and you can control the flow with having a resin break. The negative side is extra steps in the layup. So that would be like a big downside. On the other side, I like to have 
different steps just to avoid having bridging. So I don't know how this would behave with bridging. So in the next tutorial, I'll explain you how I've used these veneer sheets we've just made to cover a watch case um, with carbon fiber. So this is a cheap and fast way. It's very accessible for everyone, I think, using just epoxy glue to make this watch case uh, made out of carbon fiber. So I hope you like this. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video, and see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.